Does your hair look like this? Well, mine used to. But now that I know how to take care of it, it looks like this. A lot of people don't know that they have naturally wavy hair. So here's the deal. You could have type 1 hair, which is categorized as straight hair. You could have type 2 hair, that is categorized as wavy hair. You could have type 3 hair, which is categorized as curly hair. And you could have type 4 hair, that is categorized as kinky or coily hair. If you have curly hair, you definitely know that your hair is curly. However, if you have wavy hair, then there's a chance that you may go your entire life without even knowing about it and knowing the true potential of your hair. And also, type 2, type 3 and type 4 can be loosely called curly hair, but it's important to know that that's like a colloquialism. Essentially, if you can categorize your hair in either of these three types, then technically you could totally follow CGM which is basically just a set of rules to take care of curly or rather, let's call it textured hair. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with the semantics of it all. If you want to see my hair journey, then you can check out this video right here. It's up in the cards and I'll leave it down in the description as well. Okay, coming back to today's video. Today, I'm going to talk about my wavy hair routine. This is a budget-friendly, beginner-friendly wavy hair routine. So, this is a budget-friendly, beginner-friendly, cruelty-free, wavy hair routine video. And these are the bare minimum that you'll need. Some shampoo, conditioner, leave-in conditioner, and hair gel. All products must be curly girl friendly, which means that they shouldn't have sulfates or silicones. So, these are the basic things that you require. I'm also going to use a few other accessories. However, don't feel compelled to go out and get yourself these things, especially if you're a beginner. I'd say try out this routine a few times, see if it's for you, see if you want to commit to CGM, and then you can pick up the other accessories that you see in the video. Alright, so let's start with the routine. I've hopped into the shower and now I'm going to saturate my hair with water. Then I'm using the Mom's Go shampoo. I'm going to focus the shampoo only on my scalp and start massaging with my fingertips. It's important not to use the palm of your hands, so use your fingertips only. Using a scalp massager, I'm gonna start slowly massaging my scalp to get rid of the dirt, debris and buildup. And also stimulating your scalp when you shampoo your hair is going to improve blood flow to your scalp and this in turn is going to promote hair growth. So don't underestimate this step, it is very very important. Now we're going to rinse the shampoo out. While rinsing, you'll notice that the shampoo goes down the lengths of my hair. This is absolutely sufficient in cleaning the lengths of my hair. There is no need to add extra shampoo to your lengths separately because this is just going to dry your hair out further. And it's also important to understand that curly hair is dry to begin with. So we don't want to be doing anything to dry it out further. Now it's time to condition. I'm using the Requil conditioner because this conditioner has insane slip. And that is what you're looking for at this step. We're going to emulsify the conditioner on the palm of our hands first. And then we're going to apply in a praying hands motion. So all you have to do is fold your hands like you're praying. And then focus the conditioner from the mid length to the bottom of your hair strands. After this, I'm going to use the EXO curl comb. And I'm going to start detangling my hair. Always start from the bottom and work your way to the top. And when you're detangling, it's important for you to lift your hair a little bit so that you don't cause any excess breakage. Make sure that you're super gentle at this step. Don't hurry, take your time and detangle with patience. This is going to take some time, but take it easy and go slow. If you hurry this step up, you're going to cause a lot of breakage. That being said, it's also important to realize that losing hair while detangling is very normal. This is the only time I'm going to run a comb through my hair. I do not dry comb my hair at all. And so while detangling, you're going to lose a week's worth of hair. On average, each individual loses between 50 to 150 strands of hair a day. 
you're not going to be losing any hair between wash days because all of your hair is going to get stuck in the curl clump. Do not freak out if you lose hair when you're detangling it. As long as you're not ripping your hair out on purpose by rough handling, you're good. If you're having trouble detangling, there's no need to add more conditioner. I would say you'd rather add more water. So, take your time and comb your hair out till it's completely detangled. Now I'm going to do something that's called squish to condish. So squeeze your hair in an upward motion. And you're looking for that squishy sound. If you don't hear that squishy sound, add more water and start squishing. This step is going to encourage your curls to form. Lastly, section your hair in four and start twisting it. This is called a simple twist up. This step is called deep conditioning. Since this is a beginner friendly video, I'm using my normal conditioner as a deep conditioning treatment. However, if you're looking for a more advanced, detailed explanation on how deep conditioning works, you can watch the video up here in the cards and I'll also link it in the description. Now clip your hair up and let the conditioner sit in your hair for 30 to 40 minutes. Alright, so I've let the conditioner sit in my hair for 30 minutes and now I'm going to wash it off thoroughly. I'm out of the shower now. Here I'm going to start my styling routine. This is an upright styling routine. There are several methods that you can use to style your hair. I'll leave a playlist on the various techniques that I've already covered and more will be coming soon. You can have a look at them if you're interested. I'll leave all the relevant videos linked down in the description as well. So you can check those out once you're done with this video. All right, so now let's start styling. I'm working on damp hair here. So I'm going to start by sectioning my hair in four sections, two at the top, two at the bottom. And I'm going to keep the rest of my hair out of the way using some clips. I'll bring the section that I'm styling first to the front and the rest of the hair I'm going to push it to the back. First I'm going to apply a leave-in conditioner. I'm using the Northwish Naturals leave-in conditioner here. It's very important to emulsify your leave-in conditioner in the palm of your hands. And then we're going to apply it using the praying hands technique. Now I'm going to top things off with some gel. Emulsify and use spraying hands for application again. Now I'm going to start creating my curl clumps. So a curl clump is a family of hair that stays together in a curl. And this step is very important for curl definition. I'm using a white tooth comb to create my clumps. I'm taking vertical sections because I want the most amount of clumps from one section of hair. And I also want the most volume, which is why I'll work in vertical sections. And I'm going to run the comb through these sections to create my clumps. You'll see that my hands are shaped like a pair of scissors and I have the comb in between my fingers. Once I'm done styling an entire section of hair, I'm going to start scrunching. So I'm going to lift my hair up in an upward motion. Again, you're looking for that squishy sound. If you can't hear the squishy sound, take a spray bottle, spray your hair down and then squish. I'll follow exactly the same process for the other section of my hair. I'll take the leave-in conditioner, emulsify it in my hand, apply using praying hands. Then I'll take some gel, emulsify in my hand, apply using praying hands technique. Then I'll create my curl clumps with the comb and then I'll scrunch. In between the styling process, if you feel like your hair is drying out, it's very important to spray it down with some water. For my top sections, I'll apply my products same way as before, using praying hands, only this time I'll direct my hair in an upward motion away from my scalp. This is gonna give me some nice root lift, which will create a little more volume.
and then repeat the exact same thing on the other side. So once you're done creating the curl clumps, start scrunching. Now lastly, I'm going to take all of my hair together and I'm going to scrunch it one last time. At this point, your hair should feel like seaweed. It should be slippery and slimy to touch. If it doesn't feel like that, then maybe you should use a little more gel and a lot more water. So drop your hair to the right and scrunch. Then drop your hair to the left and scrunch. So move from side to side. Now lastly, you're going to go upside down and you're going to start scrunching. I spend a good 5-10 to 10 minutes, sometimes even more time, scrunching my hair. And this is really important because this is going to form my curls. This is what my hair looks like after I'm done styling it. If you see any frizz or any flyaways, you can pat them down with a bit of water. Okay, so once I'm done styling my hair, I'll use a cotton t-shirt and I'm just going to squeeze out some of the excess water that's in my hair. And now I'm going to plop my hair. I'm going to take an oversized cotton t-shirt and I'm going to put it on the bed with the collar away from me. Fold once at the top and twice at the bottom. Then, gingerly lower your hair into the t-shirt. Wrap the bottom folded bit around your head. Bring the two ends together and hold it in place. You want to place your hand here and not let go. So, apply some pressure with your hand and don't let go. And then, bring the folded collar bit to the back of your head. Take the sleeves and tie it in a knot. Adjust the front bit so that it's not too tight. If you want more details on how I plop and dry my hair, you can check out this video here. I'm also going to leave it linked down in the description. Alright, so I'm going to leave my plop on for 30 to 40 minutes. In the beginning, it is important to leave your plop on longer and then later as you progress, you can experiment with the amount of time that you keep it on. So I'm taking the plop off here and I'm going to air dry rest of the way. And let me just tell you that it could take you anywhere between 3 to 6 hours to dry your hair if you're air drying your hair. This is also totally normal. And I'm going to periodically flip my hair from side to side while drying because this is going to improve airflow and this will reduce some of my drying time. My hair is completely dry now. And as you can see, the gel has left a cast on my hair, which means that my hair feels crunchy. This is called a gel cast. This gel cast is what kept my curl clumps intact during the drying period. So now I'm going to want to remove the cast by doing something that we call scrunch out the crunch or SOTC. This is going to remove the hard cast of the gel and leave me with soft curls. Fair warning, I spend a good 10 minutes scrunching out the crunch, fluffing out my roots, flipping my hair around from side to side and scrunching to make sure that I've completely broken the gel cast. Okay, so here you go. These are my final results. If you need more information on how to take care of your wavy or your curly hair, you can go through my playlist for beginners to CGM. Quite literally, you'll find every single video that you're looking for when it comes to taking care of textured hair. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to see more from me, then you can always follow me on Instagram. I want to take a moment to thank you guys for watching and getting through the entire video. I definitely do not take that for granted. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michelle and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye.